welcome to my my factory. I just taken my uh, base piece off so I can talk. <coughs> Weird times we're living in. But uh, this is Tintori Casting's fiberglass room. And I just want to touch base on structural. Um, very hard to get a very, very good piece of fiberglass. Um, you could take it from me. My father started this business and we were doing visual display work in the 70s and 80s for all the department stores. And um, all those years of knowledge, I'm still going through process. You know, new things come into the market that we're allowed to use and new, um, new problems, new strategies, new hurdles. You know, they're, they're, they, they come in a shop like this because basically we're a niche company. Um, we do any size and that's not that easy. Um, you know, the thing with fiberglass is to keep it straight. You know, the, the, the walls, to keep them straight, to um, give it that very chic, straight look is very difficult. The fiberglass wants to move uh, with any little thing that will allow it to move such as drying time, you dry it too fast, it'll warp. You wait too long, it'll warp. You turn around and don't structurally support it correctly, it'll warp. So that's the thing, and to have it very strong, you know, you're looking at boxes that are non-biodegradable. You know, we're not looking at a product that's uh, thin-walled or, uh, or uh, you know, we have a, a 15 year warranty on our products. Uh, this is your standard planter. This has a structural support network in it on the top rim. It's a 22 by um, 25 high. So 22 square, 25 high, pretty standard. Um, seems like most clients like uh, tall planters. Um, this is your typical uh, PET or PVC board and what that does is it allows us to support the, the, the walls so it has a way of staying straight through the entire lifetime of the container. Um, these smaller uh, planter boxes are basically three eighths thick. This gives you a profile of what our walls look like. Um, the reason why I have a three eighths thick wall is because it has an R rating of 14, which allows us to protect the plants. The plants are the primary objective of a planter box is to protect it. We don't want to turn around and have a plant freeze or or a plant um, uh, you know over irrigate itself, drainage holders are important. But here we have a, a 3 8 wall with this PET board. Um, supporting the whole wall. So this would be a structural support network for a large planter. And we also have the rim part, which is basically solid fiberglass. It's a continuation of the wall. Um, if needed, if the structural support network had to be doubled, it wouldn't be a problem or thin. We can get this PVC board at a uh, uh, a half inch or three eighths, depending on the demands of the of the dimensions. Um, I like the PVC board. It's something that we started using about four years ago, and you can do a lot of cool things with it. You can make triangles to support corners. We can go vertical. We can go horizontal, and and it really helps the structural support. Um, but yet, I wasn't totally happy. If you could see, it does have a slight curve to it. 
Um, and I didn't realize until recently why the slight curve comes. Um, so the, the fiberglass actually sits in the mold like this. See? And what happens is um, the piece starts drying and starts creating a, a barrier of fumes in between the wall and the wall and the uh, and the and the fiberglass. And what it does is the fumes wants to exfoliate itself. And what that does is it goes to the weakest point of the box, which is usually the center. And what happens is it'll push the center to try to release itself. And obviously the box won't do that. The fiberglass won't allow that to do so. It seals in there and we get warp walls. Thus came this beautiful product that I just started using that I want to explain to you. Uh, it does two things. This is a honeycomb product. It has this thin mesh on the outside. It sits in the wall of the, once the fiberglass is on there, it sits in the wall like that. Uh, it does two things. It allows the gas from the wall, from the casting, to exfoliate itself into these chambers, thus leaving the wall totally straight through the process of drying. So this comes in various thicknesses, once again, depending on the demands of the size. And it doesn't change the R rating. Actually, it gives us a little bit more of an R rating. So the plant has lots of protection. Not only does it have the 3 8 wall, but it has this barrier, which basically, once it's all fiberglass in there, it looks like that. This is a uh, honeycombed one inch with half inch worth of uh, fiberglass. Three eighths in the front and three eighths in the back, which gives us an inch and a half wall and it stays and it's very straight, very, very straight. It actually has almost like a stone feel to it. You know, no holes, no, no variation of, of any real sort on the piece. It looks very concrete-ish and very strong and very non-biodegradable, which is important, right? There's a lot of exfoliation from the plants. There's acids, there's the, the, the food of the plant, the phosphorus, there's nitrous in there. And all of that is biodegradable material. It'll chew away wood, it'll chew away at steel, it'll chew away at, uh, at uh, any metals really. Um, aluminum happens to be a very good product, but even that, you'll have those acid stains on the outside which start on the inside. So once you see them, the box is pretty much done. You're not gonna remove that from the surface of the container. But fiberglass done right won't give you that problem, won't give you warping, won't give you um, any movement, um, it's not supposed to crack, and I can speak from experience, all my old clients have all taught me what they wanted. Um, I, I, I take a lot of re respect with uh, Don Sussman and Rebecca Cole, you know, Judith Mignazzi, Iris Kaplow, they all help me, Town and Garden and its general uh, plant specialist, I can't tell you how blessed I am to have those people in my life to be able to guide me to the perfection that I'm at now. I'm not saying I'm done. In no ways it mean I'm just telling you what I'm doing new today. Um, so I had put this board to the test. Um, I believe in it now. This is a six foot planter. with a three foot wall and it's very straight. There's no movement on it whatsoever. Not the rim, not the sides, very straight, very chic. It will not move. Um, 
The beautiful thing about this board is that not only can we um, make a great product thick and strong, but we can make a great product really thin. That's probably 22 mils thick, that surface right there. And that, with the board on there, with nothing on the back, it's unmovable. Granted, this part will be weak, but the part with the board is not gonna be moved. And what that does is it allows us to vary the weight. So we keep the R rating the same, we keep the strength the same, and we can bring the weight down. So for instance, this container weighs 35 pounds. And um, the 35 pound container could probably weigh 17 done like this. Not that I prefer it, you know, but it can be done. It can definitely be a very light container and very strong. But I always prefer a container that has the same weight uh, as wood. Um, a box like this in wood would probably weigh around 40 pounds. This probably weighs five or six pounds less. Um, I, I, I really am a, a big fan of the uh, synthetic world. I believe that synthetic is the way to go. Uh, you know, a lot of people come up to me and, you know, I'm a big outdoors guy. I, I love trout 